Hi, my name is Derek Lane. I'm from Lane's Audio, and I'm about to attempt something that a lot of bigger companies haven't been bothered doing. As of the recording of this video, companies like Slate and UA are busy perfecting emulations of microphones. And that's really cute, except for the fact that they're missing several very critical microphones in their arsenal of emulations. And so we're going to correct that today, at least to a certain degree, by using convolution reverb to get what should theoretically be a perfect emulation of this, the echo microphone. Every studio needs one of these. They just don't admit it, but they do. And you'll learn why later in this video. So a little background information. The echo microphone is a toy that I got when I was eight. And uh, I hated sharing then. Um, I'm not the best at it now, but I can share things electronically. And so you'll be able to pick up a copy of the echo microphone as a convolution reverb. What is a convolution reverb? Or what is convolution? Well, let's take a look and get a reasonable definition. This just in from Ken Hanberg, b &H. Convolution in everyday speech is defined as a coiled or twisted condition or appearance. In mathematics, the term refers to the result of the intersection of two functions, one of which is known as a fixed filter impulse response, and the second of which has been reversed, producing a third function. Well, good for them. <sighs> Great. Convolution reverbs are so-called because the sequence of signal events is reversed. A space is excited by a signal, yeah, like that one, and recorded, just like I did before. And the resulting sound or ambience of that space is then processed and used Create and recreate to an. Okay, let me just show you, okay? Because. As you probably know, digital audio is not captured as a continuous stream. It's actually captured in little tiny chunks known as samples. Some people call them frames. Anyway, the terms are interchangeable at this point. So, these tiny little samples are played back so rapidly that we don't actually hear the gap between them. In the early days of digital audio, samples couldn't quite be captured as fast as necessary to preserve the voice or music or whatever you were trying to capture in a realistic way. And so if something was digital, it'd be pretty obvious. That is correct. Well, now that we not only have really awesome sounding digital audio, but we have a lot of power that we can use to do math with it, we can do these cool tricks with audio like convolution reverb and making impulse responses and so on. So basically it boils down to this. Convolution equals multiplication and deconvolution, which I'll talk about in a minute, equals division. So we can add samples together. I can mix, for example, the sound of my Braille embosser printing the little piece from B&H earlier with my voice. And it's obvious what's going on there. But what happens if I multiply my voice times the sound of the Braille embosser? Well, if I do, it sounds like this. Now, ironically, to emulate the Echo microphone. Okay, it's not picking me up from that. It's okay. In order to emulate that, we ironically need to use another microphone like device. This is what is known as a contact microphone. Some people refer to these as instrument pickups. 
The technical name for it is a piezo transducer. So basically what we have here is most of the guts of a microphone or a speaker with the exception of a moving diaphragm. The majority of the audio that you would hear from this transducer will come from a device that has a bit of resonance in it. And therefore, when you plug this into an input, if something is resonating inside of whatever this is touching, you get those vibrations either recorded on your interface, through your amp, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to use this to get an emulation of this without capturing anything else other than the echo portion. So to find the most sensitive spot on this microphone, I am going to connect this transducer to the output of my headphone preamp and get a little tone sweep started. Now we've got a little audio from the transducer playing back. We've got the echo microphone. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get tired of that anytime soon. And uh, we've got me hearing the echo come back from the same place I'm speaking from. So uh, let's see. Logically, it makes sense to put this inside the mic. And that kind of works. I'm going to try going down here, see if that works better. Oh yeah, right there. Now this has some adhesive on the back, so I'm just going to press this down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. And now we're going to move on by unplugging that from the headphone amp, plugging this into the direct box, and record a tone sweep from the perspective of the echo microphone and I'll record that tone sweep by standing in front of one of my monitors playing it and then just letting the microphone pick it up acoustically I'm sitting in Reaper with two scrap projects loaded, the first of which contains the raw recording we just made, which when played back, sounds like this. There's a peak where the transducer resonated, it's quiet, and there's some handling noise at the end. But if I go Unsafe. to this version and another scrap project, we have a nice, normalized, trimmed, an EQ'd tone sweep that we're going to use for deconvolution. But in order to do that, I need to render this edited tone sweep to my IR prep folder. Render to file dialog MS render to F. And have it normalized again as Finish well. Midnight. File echo mic sweep dot wave plus 12.1 minus 0 0.00. Yeah, and that's obviously happened, so that's a nice hot tone sweep. And we can get on to the process of deconvolution. Let's go to the deceptively boring plugin, Reverb, FX, track one and zero. use it to do, do this deconvolution Edit, magic. Maximize X. It FX, will maximize it for you and everything. Look at that. How cool. Edit multi -line blank. All right. Property page drop. Now, what we need to do is go press the Dr edit select wet slider edit selected list one add button. Add button. Context. And from the menu that pops up, we file will app. choose File. Open media file. But we're not going to open a file. Instead, F we're going to make Podcast. one. At room, imp, edit, max, so rea, edit, edit, we will ZL, tab LL, into the reverb browse. interface. Mix to mono combo. Load impulse Looking response. for impulse response generation utilities grouping. Generate test tone. 
button. The generate test tone button. If you've never done this before, you need a tone sweep that you're going to use. Obviously, you heard the fact that I have one earlier when I made the impulse response, so I don't need to make another one. But when you press this button to make yours, you'll see a standard save dialog, but with a few additions. The first, giving you the ability to decide how long you want the tone sweep to last, and then you'll find additional fields for choosing the sample rate and bit depth. I've chosen 24-bit 48K. Moving on to the... Deconvolve button. Deconvolve button. Let's press that. Press. Open file to be deconvolved. Dialog file name. Combo box collapsed. Edit alt plus n selected echo mic sweep dot wave. Yep. Open test tone used. Dialog file name. Combo box collapsed. Edit alt plus n selected sweep dot wave. Cool. Save impulse response as dialog 16 comma 24 for PCM 32 or 64 for float DB file name edit alt plus n selected echo mic dot wave. Now this final of the three dialogues needs a little exploration because it's not just your standard save as. Save as type combo save button alt plus so got some extra Cancel stuff button, here. Property page 16 comma 24 for PCM 32 or 64 for float DB auto trim noise floor edit selected minus 150. That's good because I've already trimmed this. Dot wave bit depth. Edit selected 24. That's perfect. So let's press enter. FX, track one zero. And now three, we have Dialogue our impulse zero. response. Unsaved. I'm going to one zero. clear off all the crap on this track. I'm going to turn FX. the wet Value. Plus six point zero. signal Unsaved. of reverb up a one lot. Zero. I'm going to select my I input I that I unsaved. would like one to zero. use with reconsole, arm, normal. arm, and monitor the track. And then after messing around a bit, enjoy my virtual echo microphone. Yeah. It's a bit loud actually. Let's turn that down. And then once I've actually got this thing balanced out for real, let's play with it. Thank you. 